If you've ever struggled with jerky gimbal movements, this one tip and trick that I'm gonna teach you, this one tip and trick in DaVinci Resolve is going to transform your gimbal movements, especially when it comes to those difficult orbits. What's good, y'all? I'm Jason Anthony. I'm a professional DP based in Los Angeles, California, and my company specializes in commercial work and automotive campaigns. We shoot a lot of manufacturer campaigns, We've done stuff with Toyota, Motor Trend, Lamborghini, Lincoln, Mazda, the list goes on. And today I wanna to teach you a really cool method. If you're struggling with your orbits, maybe you're not a seasoned gimbal operator like myself, but don't worry, we have a great tutorial with a world-renowned photographer, my business partner, Andrew. We take his 87 911 Carrera and I teach him for the first time how to use a gimbal. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button because that tutorial you're not gonna to wanna to miss because I give away tips, tricks, how to dial in your settings and really it's a really good video. You're going to want to catch it. But today we're going to not fix it in camera, but fix it in post. And essentially what we have up on the screen is some shots from our Lamborghini Huracan Storado campaign we did about a year ago. And I was on some tighter focal lengths because anyone could shoot gimbal shots on a 16, 20 mil, 24 mil. But once you get to 35, 50 and 70 millimeters, like in these shots, it's really easy to get a wonky orbit. So this method is gonna smooth out our orbits. We're gonna be hopping into fusion, just follow along, pull up an orbit clip that you wanna try out and let's get into it. But don't worry, fusion, if I could do it, you guys could do it. I'm not the best when it comes to fusion. I take pride in my coloring, but fusion I'm learning with you guys. So let's jump right in. So I'm gonna play back this clip and as we could see the Z axis dips, it just the elevation drops and I want that reveal to be nice and smooth. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna hold down shift and hit the space bar. That's gonna bring up our quick menu tool. And we're gonna start typing in planner tracker for the planner tracker. And then you can hit add or enter. Now, right here's our node for the planner tracker. And if yours isn't connected, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to connect it right now. So if it's looking like this, all we wanna do is hold down the shift, grab our tracker node and hover over the line. You should see blue, yellow, let go of the mouse. And now we're stuck. Now, the next thing we wanna do is open up our inspector tab in the top right corner. If you're seeing the image looking like this, just hit that. And now we have all of our tools and settings that we get to play with. The first thing to do is go to motion type and change perspective to translation. Super simple. And let's take our playhead and scrub over to the middle. Now, these numbers right here are, I believe, just the seconds of this specific clip. They're markers for whatever reason. Let's go to the middle of the clip. So we're gonna track something that's not being covered up essentially. Now, the next thing we wanna do is take our cursor and start drawing our mask. And what I like to do is use this tire right here. It's kind of centered up with the shot and there's a bunch of good contrast in the image. We have some shadows, mid-tones, highlights hitting the rim and that's gonna let our AI tracker get those sticking points onto the wheel and really do its job. Now your mask doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure you have enough coverage. And now we're gonna get ready to track. What I want you to do is go up to the reference time, hit that set button, and then go down the tracking. We have our reverse tracking, our stop and pause button, and then our forward tracking. Let's hit that forward tracking and let it do its thing. Notice up on the screen, we have green and white tracking markers, and this is what we wanna see. Those sticking points are gonna allow the AI to track that shot so we get the nice smooth orbit or the reveal. Now, once the track Tracking's done. All we have to do now is just simply go up to operation mode and hit steady. If I play it back, we're gonna get a really nice smooth shot. But what's up with these borders? We see some checkerboarding. Well, if I go back to the editing tab and play it back, these are creating black bars as you guys could be seeing. So what is this tracker essentially doing? Well, if you're familiar with mirrorless cameras, say the FX3 that I'm shooting on right now, if I go to the stabilization and turn it into active mode, it's cropping into the sensor, giving more real estate for the in-body image stabilization to essentially just stabilize the image. And that's what Resolve's AI is doing right now. 
The only thing we need to do now is go to the inspector. Once again, if it's not open on the edit tab, hit that button. And then we could do the transform right here and zoom in. I'm gonna just adjust to my liking. And now if we play it back, we're making sure there's no black bars showing up. And if I continue to play back this clip, look how much smoother it got, guys. It is so much smoother. All right, let's move on to the next clip. It's a little bit more of a dynamic movement. Notice how I'm wrapping around and then jibbing up. I teach this in our gimbal tutorial, dropping in a week or two. Jibs, I don't see many people doing with the gimbal. And if you're tall like me, I'm 6'4", you can get some really cool parallax perspective vertically. Stay tuned for that video. You're not going to want to miss it. But essentially, this isn't the smoothest shot. So what can we do? What I'm going to do is stop this in the middle of the playhead right here. So I don't have to do it in the fusion tab, but let's hop into fusion. Same thing. Shift space. Planner trackers already selected for me. I'm going to hit add and we're already connected. We can go up to motion type, change it to translation, easy. And now what we could do is start drawing on the screen. Now, in the past, I've tried tracking entire cars. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This method will work, I'd say 97 to 99% of the time to get those smooth orbits, unless you absolutely bush your, your movement. So get multiple takes and I'm playing everything back in real time. This isn't slowed down because I want you guys to see how smooth this comes out. So right now, I'm gonna just start drawing around the front nose of the car to see if we can get a great track. Make sure you connect everything. If you don't connect it, it's not gonna work. And now let's go up to the set button because we're already in the middle of the clip with our playhead right here. And we're just gonna track forwards and backwards. Now, this is gonna take a little bit of time. I'll be right back. I don't wanna bore you and yeah, let's just wait for this to finish. So the tracking just finished. Let's go back up to operation mode, hit steady, and let's jump back into the edit tab and see how this renders out with some smooth playback. So let's give it a couple seconds. Let Resolve do its thing, rendering the cache for us so we get a nice smooth playback to see if there's any discrepancies in our shot, which so far I'm not seeing any snaps, any jitters, any movements, so that's a good sign. Got some big black bars, but we're gonna crop those out. All right, let's see where we're seeing the most bars right here. So we're gonna go to the transform and yeah, just start tweaking it. And let's play it back a few times. Nope, we can't. We gotta keep tweaking it until we find that clean shot without any bars creeping in along our border. And here we go. I'm gonna punch in a little bit because I want the to land on the car while it's centered up. I'm gonna give it a little bit more foreground too so that when we play this back scrubbing through, it's a nice smooth wraparound to a top jib shot. The more dynamic your gimbal movements are, the more stand out they're gonna look to the viewer. So if you could add multiple axis movements in your gimbal shots, you're really gonna step up your game. So give those a shot. Like I said, the tutorial is dropping and I showcase some cool movements. But as of right now, this is so much smoother than that original movement that I did. Let's move on to the last clip. Now this one's at 70 millimeters. Any slight little movement is gonna mess up your shot. And that's why I like to dial in my dead band. It's all about the dead band, but notice how it's a little wonky. It kind of dips in the Z axis because the gimbal stabilizes everything besides that Z axis. So what do we do? We're gonna go to the middle of the clip. We're gonna hop into fusion. Same thing guys, shift space, planner tracker. Let's get it going. Motion type, perspective to translation. And this time I'm gonna track the headlight. So we're just gonna click around the headlight. We have great contrast points with the white in the paint. We have some shadows right here in the headlight. We're gonna hit our set point. Once again, our playhead's in the middle and we're moving forward and backwards. And this is a nice, smooth, fast track. Operation mode to steady. Let's get back to the clip. All right, so playing it back and it's definitely doing its thing. And notice how it's moving around. That means it's fixing that Z axis for us. And all we need to do is punch in 
And I love the way compressed shots look. I really wanted the mountains to be parallaxing behind the Lamborghini. And that's why I decided for this detail shot to get that tighter shot. So that's really it, guys. You just learned how to use the planner tracker in Fusion. I hope it wasn't that brutal. If you guys thought this video was helpful, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna be starting to drop a lot more editing tutorials, but with the rebrand of this channel, it's all going to be focused around cars, cameras, and caffeine. So if that's something you're into, if you wanna learn how to shoot car commercials or get big photo campaigns for your favorite auto manufacturers or say you're just a car enthusiast and you want to get better content of your own car hit that subscribe button we're dropping two videos a week all year in 2025 until next time everybody i'm jason anthony i'll catch you on the next one peace